Not sure what to eat for dinner? Today, there are endless options available right at your fingertips. With the advent of delivery apps and mobile order pickup, going out to eat is easier than ever. Deciding what to get, however, is a whole different issue. As the selection keeps expanding and the restaurant industry evolves, fast food services continue to revolutionize the way we dine in and out. There was a time, though, when a quick meal couldn't be ordered in advance. Now, for anyone who's grown up having pizza delivered to your doorstep or Uber Eats dropping off the latest local specials, imagining a world without fast food may seem impossible. A world where there's no Chinese takeout, happy meals, meals or frosties to dip your fries in. What did people eat before? Without going into too much detail, let's quickly review how the fast food industry we know today started out. Founded in 1921, White Castle was the first fast food chain to open. They set out on a mission to change people's perception of hamburgers. The open kitchen design allowed customers to see how the food was being prepared before it was served. It was like a live cooking show right before your very eyes. In 1948, the McDonald brothers opened their newly redesigned restaurant that served a full menu of burgers and fries using a patented assembly line technique. You heard that right. It wasn't only grease and a little magic that made fast food so delicious. There was some science to it, too. By 1951, the term fast food was officially recognized when it appeared in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary for the first time. As this type of service took over the food service industry, several new chains began to open their doors, including Burger King and Taco Bell in the early 1950s, followed by Wendy's in 1969. Prior to these chains, dine-in restaurants served as an upper-class experience reserved for special occasions. For lunch, you might sit at the counter of the local diner and order the daily special. Nowadays, as more affordable options continue to become available, going out to eat or ordering in is often a weekly treat for many households. Not only is there an app for almost every food craving, but delivery services mean you don't have to leave your couch. This wouldn't have been possible without the rapid growth of fast food locations in the 1950s and 1960s. The first McDonald's franchise opened in 1955 in Des Plaines, Illinois. Today, they have over 30,000 franchise stores in more than 120 countries around the globe. By 1958, McDonald's had sold 100 million burgers across America, prompting other food chains to join the revolution. Why should burger joints have all the fun? That same year, Pizza Hut opened their first location in Wichita, Kansas. A major hit with pizza lovers everywhere, the brand grew at a rapid pace and by 1971 was recognized as the number one pizza restaurant chain in the world. They now have 16,000 locations across more than 100 countries. Sure, there was always the local town pizzeria, but Pizza Hut took the humble pie around the world. The early 1970s brought about another big change for fast food, the drive through window. While the idea of picking up an order from a window was not new, it was Wendy's who introduced the first drive through service that allowed customers to order at a speaker and then collect their meal without ever leaving their car. As the fast food industry continued to expand, it became more competitive, thus triggering the burger wars of the 80s and 90s. This involved a series of targeted advertisements that directly focused on one or more competitors from different franchises. The rivalry between McDonald's and Burger King initially sparked the combative ads, but soon Wendy's, along with other chains, got in on the action. In 1984, Wendy's released their iconic Where's the Beef campaign that claimed their burger patties had more real beef than both McDonald's and Burger King. Nowadays, these smear campaigns aren't as common. We now have Twitter for that. 
One thing that hasn't changed, though, is having a big celebrity promote your brand. McDonald's latest celebrity endorsement deal is with BTS. Is there anyone more famous right now? It's almost as exciting as when Michael Jordan teamed up with McD's in the 90s to launch his special edition burger, the McJordan. Or when Pizza Hut had Ringo Starr promote their new stuffed crust pizza in 95. Advertising has always been an essential and at times necessary evil, and probably the biggest reason for the success of the fast food industry. As the demand for new fast food restaurants continued to grow, competitors had to find ways to stand out. McDonald's had already transformed the industry with their assembly line food prep process. However, their portion sizes were still on the smaller side. This wasn't the typical burger combo you see today. The large portion trend hadn't arrived yet. That happened in 1957 when Burger King introduced the Whopper. Strategically designed to size up the competition, this was the beginning of menu shifts across the board for most fast food franchises. The objective was simple, go big and feel like home. McDonald's didn't have a counter until they launched their iconic Big Mac in 1968, which offered an extra half bun and a secret sauce customers still enjoy today. While increasing portion sizes helped draw in the working crowd, McD's wanted to expand the customer base by focusing on its status as a family-oriented restaurant. And that's where the Happy Meal comes in. Launched in 1979, this special menu item came equipped with a small fry, entree, drink, and a toy that was catered to children. The toy was the key. Almost every kid remembers getting a Happy Meal at some point. McDonald's serves up so many Happy Meals that today they are considered the biggest toy distributor in the world, handing out over 1.5 billion toys each year. Another innovation we take for granted are the value meals and deals offered by most restaurants. Well, we have Wendy's to thank for this type of promotion. It was 1989 when they introduced the first super value meal, nine items available for 99 cents every day. That's right, 99 cents is all it took to fulfill your daily food cravings. Not only were menu selections expanding, but delivery services were beginning to transform the way people received their meals. Today, you can get any food you want delivered by using an app or other online services. However, that was not always the case. The original dominating force when it came to delivery was Domino's. Opened in 1960, Domino's has always been recognized for their speedy delivery service, specifically the 30 minutes or less deal. When the deal launched in 1979, they made a promise to customers that their pizza would be delivered in 30 minutes or less, and if it wasn't, the pizza was free. This made them the number one choice when it came to ordering pizza at home. Home. With the introduction of the World Wide Web in the 90s, the possibilities for fast food delivery expanded even further. You can now get pizza delivered at any time of the day from anywhere you want, really. In 1994, Pizza Hut launched PizzaNet, one of the first websites on the internet. They became the first national chain to offer pizza delivery ordering online, changing the way you eat out forever. Before then, you had to actually dine your nearest pizza joint to place an order. Yet today, with the help of services like Uber Eats, it can all be done with the click of a few buttons. Fast, speedy service right at your fingertips. What will be next? Technology today has made fast food service more accessible than ever. Anything you could want to order is only a few clicks away. This was all made possible by the first online food delivery system. World Wide Waiter was a basic website launched in 1995 that delivered food from 60 different restaurants. It mainly focused on providing corporate businesses with catered meals, but ultimately set the groundwork for the future of online ordering. Nowadays, most fast food chains have a personalized mobile app that you can order from ahead of time. In addition, you also have the option of using electronic key 
kiosks and self-serve stations that make it easy to place an order in-store quickly. These adaptations in both the type of food that is being served, the way we order, and the way it is delivered has resulted in a drastic move away from dine-in fast food. The days of hanging out in the ball pit of a McDonald's play place are now fond memories from the 90s. Instead, we are witnessing the shift away from family-friendly dining as more and more fast food chains transition towards efficient in-and-out service. The goal has become getting you the food as fast and conveniently as possible. With worldwide expansion driving the industry, the expectation is no longer to sit and enjoy the food, but rather take it with you. The question then becomes, where can we expect the industry to go next? In 2016, a Domino's franchise location tested out a drone delivery system that could mean the elimination of delivery drivers altogether. Some restaurant chains have even begun introducing the idea of using ghost kitchens, basically kitchens without any dining room or pickup counter, rather than physical franchises to better serve the rising delivery demand. It's possible as the more automated machinery enters the workforce, we will see a decrease in the number of individuals who interact with our meals before they reach our doorsteps. Is this a future we should be excited for, or will we miss the human element? Thanks for checking us out. Leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell. Oh, and for more great videos, just tap or click.